Hey everybody, welcome back to Hang With Harv. Today we're going to work on a restoration of a King Cutter axe. This happens to be um, an old axe that I got from my grandfather. So one of the unique aspects to this axe is it happens to be a hewing style of axe. And what that means is if I put this, this 90 degree here and I set this up, what you should be able to see is that that the axe head curves away, right? So it, it, it kind of curves away. It will allow you to work straight against the wood and it gives your hand a little bit of a, your knuckles we'll say, right? So you don't end up hitting knuckles against something. It'll be a little bit out from that. Not a lot, but a little. I haven't done anything to this axe as of yet. It's got some markings on it. You know, it looks like some chips came out of it. And I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But what we will do is we will uh, use our granite stone here that we picked up at uh, one of the woodworking shows. And we will use this to do some just general cleanup here. And I'm just going to use that to kind of help lock that down. And then we'll put a little bit more of this. This is uh, simple green, I believe is what it is. It's, I'm just using that for a lubricant takes grease and stuff off. I'm just going to use that as a lubricant and I'm just going to use this to kind of flatten the back. Make sure that that's nice and flat and cleaned up. Now again, I was just holding that flat on there. I wasn't giving it any kind of an angle. And what I'm seeing, if you can see there, you can see kind of just setting it down. You know, it's, it's uh, probably needs to be done over an edge here just to uh, kind of ensure that I'm getting the you know the the flat part of the blade so we'll just work it like this I probably need a coarser sandpaper this is I think 400 grit but we're gonna go with it because that's what I have making progress what do you guys do when you're on the flatten or restore an old axe like this? Do you guys go through these same steps? Leave me a comment. It's actually the first axe I've ever restored. I've, I've done some restore, restoration on um, uh, woodworking planes, but I've never done much with an axe. So this is the first axe. And really, like I said, the reason I'm restoring it is came from my grandfather. And we're getting there. We're sneaking up on it. <clears throat> and if you guys are, are like me, you don't have a dedicated uh, place for, you know, sharpening your tools, and you're just doing it on the top of your bench, getting yourself a really large cookie sheet like this to uh, kind of help catch all the drippings and everything uh, that are coming off of this stone as I'm sharpening. I think it uh, seems to be working out really well. It's containing everything and uh, protecting my bench all right, so to get the uh, kind of the, some of the odd parts, if you're a purist, look away. I'm going to use a pneumatic tool to uh, kind of get in some of those areas because I don't have the time to putz around with that. Before this sandpaper is totally shot, I'm going to go ahead and just use it to clean up the face. We're going to push that to the side for the moment. And I want to address these edges a little bit. This one's kind of got some chips out of it. And while I could leave it that way, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I'm going to use my little bench metal vise here and clamp it to my workbench and this is going to give me an instant metal vise here in the workshop that will allow me to address these edges here uh, safely yeah i'm going to call that good they're smooth at least i don't plan on hitting it with a metal hammer at all so i'm not worried about that but now we do need to need to work on this edge here. And I'm sure I could work that edge with a file. 
But I tend to uh, use my sharpening system to sharpen things like this. So we're going to give it a quick switcheroo here and we'll be back. All right, so what I have here is uh, my Tormac sharpener, sharpening system. It's a uh, T7 and I use this for sharpening all of my chisels and gouges and carving tools. So one of the things that it comes with is this little gauge here to see uh, you know what what the cutting angle is so it looks like it's a 30 degree angle So I just need to set this gauge to 30 So the Tormac has a number of different uh, items that you can get for it <clears throat> uh, One of my most recent purchases was this little uh, attachment for a, a knife uh, Sharpener and that allows me to hold even my carving knives. So we have that we have a large sharpener. Uh, this one is for most chisels and plane blades. We have a truing tool. This head here happens to be uh, designed for axes. Now, I've sharpened my axe using this before, but I don't know if this axe head is going to work or not. So basically, we've set this in here. And we take our gauge that we've set to the angle and coming off of the wheel, we start looking at this oops, and you try and get it to where the angle is. And I, I can see from this that I went too high. So I'm going to crank it down. So now we got the angle set. We're going to lock it in. Okay. I'm going to turn this unit around like so. Now, one of the first things that I got to do is, is what's called grading the stone. Now, it comes with this little tool here um, that, that basically has a fine surface and a rough surface. So if I turn this on, and what you'll notice is that it, it runs real quiet, real smooth, real slow. So if I run this this stone across the surface that just turned that stone into a, a rougher stone okay so now it's going to take off more material so that's where we're going to do our, our heavy grinding okay so I'm going to put this in and we're going to get it right here in the center and we're going to just start grinding the nice thing about this is you can press on this as hard as you want and you're not going to damage the stone you're not going to damage the unit um, and because it's a cold method right it uses water and slow speed you're not going to damage your tool you're not going to damage the heat treatment on the tool so this works really well if you're wanting to add a different bevel like say you've got a plain blade that's came from the factory at um, I don't know 25 or 30 degrees and you want to change it to uh, a different angle uh, you can absolutely do that with this unit uh, by setting the angle and just working it back and forth until it's there. So here you can see just after a couple seconds of uh, grinding on that what we've got. Okay. So and again, I'm not putting pressure on this. You could, but you don't have to. Okay. So I'm just lining it up and then I'm just going to keep swinging it back and forth. Once we have the rough grind done on this, we'll regrade the stone to a, a fine grind and we will we'll finish it off. Every so often I, I, like, I like to take it off, wipe it, and just check my progress, make sure that it, everything is looking good, and we just keep working it back. Okay, I am happy with that now let's regrade regrading the the stone from a coarse grit right now to a fine is just as simple as taking the grading stone flipping it over and applying pressure like I said you can't damage this tool from what I've everything I've learned about it you can't cut yourself with it though <laughs> be very careful this edge here um, can become quite sharp. So now that's a much finer uh, grit and 
Uh, we'll just go back and we will continue to polish. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the um, other side of our Tormek here with the leather strap on it. And we're going to apply some of uh, Tormek's, uh, oh, it's a honing compound. And we're going to use that and just apply some of that around our wheel. And we're just going to do this freehand, obviously. This, this is just to uh, polish that up. And like you would do with any, any strop, you would work it back and forth. Okay there, guys. Hopefully what you can see is that we do have a uh, mirror polish on our, uh, on our blade. So it's definitely uh, feels sharp. Let's, let's try the, uh, the old paper test here. Is it perfect? No. I'd say it's sharp. You know, is it sharp consistently throughout? Mm, maybe not, but there's definitely uh, definitely a sharp edge there, without a doubt. All right, so I just grabbed a spoke shave, and this is where having a shave horse would come in because I'd be able to do it in that. I could, you could also use a vise or a clamp. So as you can see, even even without having a shaving horse or any other kind of sophisticated clamp, you can clamp something like this to your bench and perform the necessary shaping on it. Wooden hammers are great. I picked up one of these jobs uh, off eBay and was able to get uh, some replacement leathers for it that just came in the mail and so it's rawhide it's a rawhide hammer and so that that will allow me to hit on this axe and not damage it and it's also not damaging this whereas that wood is going to get chewed up by hitting it with metal all right so now i can see how far that axe came down and what's holding it back right and so I need to shave some more off of this and hopefully that was the last one because we were we were really pretty close um, before so let's try this again making sure that we're putting it on from the right side <laughs> it's sharp <clears throat> Guaranteed it's sharp. I'm not flipping you off. That just happened to be where it caught me. All right. So, got a bucket just so that I can be messy. Whoops. Oh, a little, little linseed oil on the bench. Never hurt nothing. All right. So, get that nice and lubed up. Put some linseed oil on the top here of this gem. Okay, so I just went off camera, as I said, and I cut that down. And now what I want to do is split that to drive it the other way. And so I went and picked up my assortment of wedges here. Fortunately, I think many of them are way too big. I do happen to have a couple that are smaller. Well, all right, everybody. That's going to wrap it up for Hang With Harv today. I hope you uh, liked this video. Uh, it was a quick, short little video. Uh, we took a, an old hewing-style axe, a single bevel axe, and we cleaned it up so that you can see the logo of King Cutter on there. Uh, I don't know how old this is. Uh, it is from uh, one of my relatives. We put a nice edge on it, sharpened it up, handled it with this nice little 12 inch 
uh, axe handle and uh, it's 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 on there solid it's razor sharp I obviously cut myself uh, while I was handling it uh, should have put some tape or something over that to protect myself from that sharp edge uh, but this tool is uh, ready to go yeah if you're not already a subscriber uh, please uh, click that subscribe button smash the like button down there as well uh, that way you'll get notified each time I post a new video um, as I've said many times before, uh, I am a, a part-time uh, hobbyist, and so I don't put out videos every week. Uh, I try to do a video about once a month. Sometimes uh, it, it may take me a little bit longer than that. It just depends on the length of the, of the project that I'm working on. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for hanging with Harv today. We'll catch you on the next video.